please feel free to support the channel that way. Uh, and big news. We got the shirts. We got the shirts printed. The uh, Too Tall Toby. This one says technical tips and tricks. We should go to full screen for this, right? Technical tips and tricks. Too Tall Toby shirts are available. Uh, and you can order these over. You can order these over at the merch shop at uh, twotalltopy.com. It's a little bit funky, the order form right now. We're trying to get a smoother order form. So consider this kind of like a beta experience. Uh, Ow! Support. So let's do a Model Monday Live solve here. Uh, this is one of these practice models. You can try this practice model. It's called Pole Bracket. It's been out for a few weeks, I think, maybe like a week. Uh, and uh, num a number of people have tried this, and a few people have asked me you know, for advice on how to do this, particularly these fillets, uh, which surprised me. I don't think the fillets should be that hard, but uh, the, the fillets seem to be causing people some challenges. So let's take a look at this model now. We're going to do a live solve, and uh, the way that I would create this model, uh, as always, would be I would look at the print first, and I would try to come up with a game plan of how I would create this, kind of like build the model in reverse in my head. Uh, this is something that takes a little longer when you're first getting started in 3d cad but as you get more and more experience it just really starts to come natural so starting plane starting profile where should the origin be located that's the first thing you want to ask yourself uh starting plane starting profile where's the origin the zero 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 so in a model in any model that you look at a lot of times the starting profile which is like your first sketch is going to be the footprint and that's what it's going to be in this model, too. It just makes sense to me to capture the footprint. Now, what you use to, to help justify that or make that decision is a, a combination of uh, the, the type of feature that's being created and the dimensions that are uh, surrounding that feature and the rest of the model. And in the case of this model here, it looks to me like the center to center distance from here to here is pretty significant. And there's a number of dimensions that are coming from that, like this 125 is coming from that, the 54 out to the end is coming over there. Um, you know, these are going to be things that are going to help me to justify where the origin is going to be. So in this case, I think I would either put the origin here or I would put the origin here. And I think either one of those is, is valid. And, you know, you don't want to spend too much time uh, planning. You'll never get the work done, uh, kind of like uh, paralysis by analysis. But you do kind of want to have a basic game plan. And so if we were to imagine how we would create this feature it would probably be something like create the basic footprint shape and extrude it up then create this shape here and extrude it up then create this circular shape here and extrude it up then create this tombstone shape off on the side and extrude it out mid plane then create a rectangular cut down the middle of that tombstone shape then create a cut extrude for this hole here then create a cut extrude here for this um slotted hole and then finish off by adding in those fillets and maybe this hole here punching in through the side that's like uh in my head that's kind of what i'm thinking as i look at a model like this i'm kind of thinking through what's going to be the order of the features before i get started and that way when it comes time to get started i kind of already have the entire plan so i'm going to go to my solidworks 2020 build here and we're going to go New part, pick the appropriate template. This thing is plain carbon steel in MMGS. We're gonna go top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and we're gonna create a line here at an angle, come back, touch the end point, come around to create a radius, and then we can type in that radius as we're creating it, which will save us some time. Uh, we can then come around to this end and basically do the same thing, come back, touch the end point, come around, type in the radius here, and then finish that off with that end point. Then we can take these two points here and we can merge them together. We can then take this point and make it tangent just by picking the point. We can take this point and this point, make them coincident. We can take this point and this point, make them horizontal, and then finish up here with a smart dimension that goes from center to center there at 125. Now we're, re we're ready to turn this into an extrusion. So we're gonna bring this up to a height of 15 and we're ready to jump into the next feature. So that next feature, you know, just like we had planned it out, is going to be on the top plane here. It's going to start at that same origin location and come over, and we will make these two co-radial because they're going to line up. And then this is going to be a 50 from center to center, and we're going to extrude that up to a height of 25 total. So that gives us that second feature there. Now for our third feature, we're going to uh, create a circle sketch here. One thing that's kind of cool about circle sketches is that if you single click the center point, and you, you uh, come over here to the edge of the arc, 
you're left with an underdefined circle. You haven't actually locked down that diameter. So then you have to pick that whole control, pick this and make it co-radial. But if you create that circle, wake up the center point, come out here to this point, the point of tangency in this case, it actually does create a coincident relationship. So then you kind of have that co-radial all in one move. You don't have to go back and make that second uh, sketch relationship. And so this is gonna come up to a height of 50. And then we are going to go to the front plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and we're going to create that kind of tombstone shape. In this case, I'm just going to um, wake up the the uh, axis here. I'm not sure if that. Oh yeah, I have to actually make that uh, uh, visible, I guess, to wake up that axis. So this is going to be a radius here of what's the radius 14. I'm looking over at my second screen to pick up that radius, and then we could do a view temporary axis and then align this to this. This is a good example of why we want to save our cuts to the end when we're doing stuff like this. Now I'm going to go from the base up to this location here, and we're going to give that a height of 26. And then we are going to go from the uh, center line, which this is now collinear to, and then hold shift. And that lets us pick the tangency point. When you hold shift on your keyboard, you can get tangency in one move. So we'll make that 54, and then that's going to get extruded out to a depth of 22. So we're going to make this 22 and then we can do right mouse button, pick mid plane and then right mouse button again to finish that guy off. So again, this is why it's important to save our cut extrudes for later. If we had created this cut extrude here as part of the sketch or if we had um, created this first for some reason, then, you know, creating that tombstone would be a lot more difficult because we would have that extra geometry kind of landed in the middle and then we'd have to maybe go through and clear that out. So we want to make sure that we create our cut extrude later. Here, I'll just do it again just to uh, just to do this the right way. So pick a face, begin a sketch, orient the view, S key circle, wake up the center point, single click, move your mouse, let go of your mouse, and then we can make that a diameter of 40. I already forgot it, even though I just did it like two seconds ago. <laughs> now we'll go through all. And then um, we can once again pick that sketch, that plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and we're going to sketch a rectangle. And we're going to say that's going to have a width of two. And then this dimension doesn't really matter. I'm just going to make it 80 just so that it sticks out a little bit further. Uh, but you'd have to decide if uh, that is really appropriate. Um, we're going to make that midpoint. And then we can do S key extrude cut right mouse button through all right mouse button. That creates that little slot there that's running down the, uh, the side of that thing. Uh, pick this face, begin a sketch, orient the view, S key circle. And we can make that a center point circle with a diameter of... 9.6 that's my weird dimension a lot of times in these prints i'll have one weird dimension so that i can get a uh, nice consistent uh, uh result from the answer and then i'll go top plane begin a sketch orient the view and we will do uh let's see here we're gonna do our this guy's at 22 so it's concentric concentric and then this has a radius of 22 and S key extrude cut, right mouse button through all, right mouse button. Up, oh, through all in the wrong direction. And the last thing on this print looks like it's that fillet. So that's it. We pretty much are done with that. So uh, let's see here. Radius of eight there for that fillet. And there we go. 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 That looks pretty good. Final spin, spin it around, give it a good once over, make sure that it looks like everything that you saw in the uh, print. And then we can go to evaluate mass properties and we can come up with a mass of 1300 exactly. 1300 grams exactly. Um, and the 1300 grams exactly is a result of me having that weird diameter for the uh, the diameter of this circle here, 9.6. If you guys ever see a weird dimension that I drop in there, that's probably what I'm trying to do. I'm, tr I'm trying to get the answer to be something that is like, uh, you know, clean, clean dimension. Cool. So I think that was pretty full. That was, that was full. I said, instead of cool, it was pretty cool. And it was pretty full. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that, if you like that kind of stuff, uh, seeing you know an expert go through and model it out and share his thought process, uh, it might be a good time to like, comment, subscribe, maybe uh, send me some, some financial support over Super Chat or over Super Thanks if you're watching the recording or over PayPal if you prefer. And of course, don't forget, we got the new shirts. We're going to try and sell out of these shirts before the end of the year. I'm sure it's going to happen. It's totally going to happen.
All righty. And so with that, uh, let's see here. Did we get the answer correct? Yes, we did. Yes, we did it. We were able to solve that model. No problem. No problem at all. Uh, Tristan says, I thought that that 9.6 was a weird inch to millimeter conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. A little behind the scenes uh, information there. Now you know why I do those.